Draw the shear and bending moment diagrams for the beam. The beam itself is 8 meters long. There's 2 meters between the pin and the 7 meter vertical load, 2 more meters more between the 7 newton load and the 12 kilonewton meter moment, and 4 meters to the end of the beam, which has a roller at it. The first step, as per normal, is to draw the free body diagram of your beam. At a pin, you'll have two forces. You have the two applied loads in the middle, and at the roller, you will have one vertical force. So you've got two meters, two meters, and four meters. Once you've drawn your free body diagram, the second step is to do your equations of equilibrium. So the sum of the forces in the x direction gives you ax equals zero, because there aren't any others. The sum of the forces in y, ay minus seven, plus by equals zero. And the sum of the moments at, say, a gives you seven times two plus 12 minus by times eight equals zero. Well, if you solve that, by is 3.25 kilonewtons, and you substitute that back into the sum of the forces in the y direction, and you get ay is 3.75 kilonewtons. Once you have your reaction forces, ax, ay, and by, then you can draw your shear and bending moment diagrams. The shear diagram starts at the left-hand end at the value of the reaction force there. The reaction force at the left-hand end of the beam is 3.75 kilonewtons. So that's where my V diagram is going to start. Nothing happens between this 3.75 kilonewtons and 2 meters, so V is constant up until that point. At 2 meters, you have a point load down. That point load down drops your V diagram by 7. So if you started at 3.75, you're going to end up at minus 3.25 because 3.75 minus 7 is minus 3.25. So this is the drop that comes from your 7 kilonewton load down. The 7 kilonewton load down drops your V diagram by 7. Now nothing else happens at 3 or 4. At 4 I have the the point moment, but that does not alter my V diagram. 5, 6, 7, 8, nothing else happens until the end of the beam. At the end of the beam you have the point load up from the roller. The point load up from the roller is 3.25. This is BY. It's important to notice that that gets you back to zero. If your V diagram does not come back to zero at the end of your beam, your beam is not in equilibrium, or more to the point, you've done something wrong. If you're going to do the sh the bending moment diagram now, m in kilonewton meters, it's always important to label your axes, x's in meters. m starts at the moment at the left hand end of the beam. There isn't a moment at the left hand end of the beam. If you look on your free body diagram, there is no moment at the end of the beam. So m is going to start at zero. v is above the x-axis at the beginning of the shear diagram. So m is going to be increasing because v is positive. V is greater than zero, M is increasing. The first chunk between zero and two, the area under the V curve is 3.75 times two, or 7.5. So M is going to increase by 7.5 over this two meters. That gets you up to 7.5 kilonewton meters. V is constant, means that M is linear. So I have a perfect line between zero and 7.5 kilonewton meters. The slope, is equal to the value of V. So my slope here is 3.75. The point force, 7 kilonewtons, does not change the moment diagram, but it does in fact change the value for D, for V. And the different value of V means that M is behaving differently. Now I have area below the x-axis. Area below the x-axis gives me a decreasing M. M is going to be decreasing from this point. It's going to decrease with a slope equal to the value for the constant V. So over these next two, I'm going to decrease with a value of the slope of 3.25. The area under the curve in this part is 3.25 times 2 meters, or 6.5. Again, V is constant, so M is linear. 
and I get down to a value of one kilonewton meter. Now I have a point moment. The point moment, clockwise, gives me a discontinuity in my M diagram. I jump up. My jump up will come all the way up to a value of 12 plus 1. I was at 1, now I'm going to add 12, I'm going to get up to 13. So that's my value at x equals 4. I have 13 for my internal moment. Now I have a perfectly constant V with an area under the x-axis. The area under the x-axis is 3.25 times 4, which is 13. So my M is going to decrease linearly by 13. The area is under the axis, so you get a decrease. The v is constant, so it's linear. You're going to decrease linearly by 13. Well, 13 minus 13 is 0. So we have come at the end of the beam, at the tip of the beam, to a zero moment condition. Double check does, that your free body diagram does not in fact have a moment at the tip, and you have drawn the shear and bending moment diagrams. The slope here is minus 3.25.